Welcome back to Beat the Big Guys. Hi there, I'm your host, Sandy Rosenthal. And today we have two guests and they hail from the great state of Louisiana, same as I am, but from a different town. They're from Homer, Louisiana, and their names are Cherry and Sherry Wilmore. Hello, ladies. Hello. How are you doing today? Thank you for having us on. I'm wonderful and you're so welcome. I've been looking forward to having you on because you are working on a project that I think is going to help save the children of our country. And it all started right here in Louisiana. And I really look forward to uh, talking more about it with you. But first, some of our listeners may not be familiar with, with you two. And um, I'm gonna read a short introduction now, okay? Okay, here goes. Meet Cherry and Sherry Wilmore, also known as everybody's favorite twins. Their journey began in Lake Charles, Louisiana, navigating the twist of the state's foster care system, leading them to Oberlin, Louisiana, before finally settling in their forever home of Homer, Louisiana. Today, we'll be talking about one of their many creations, an organization called Laptop of Love. The Wilmore sisters, both raised in foster care, launched the program in 2020 in an effort to provide high school seniors who are in foster care with the necessary with the necessary resources to build their future. Well, that just sounds phenomenal. And I just can't wait to learn more, uh, not only about the program, but how you came up with the idea. So take, take it away. Hi, I'm Sherry. Hi, I'm Sherry. And we so are everybody's favorite twins. So thank you for having us. So my sister Sherry is going to start and give you guys a brief intro and I'll probably tag in as needed at who we are. Awesome. So Sherry and I, like we stated, we um, grew up in the Louisiana foster care system. We entered at the age of six and we exited out of foster care at the age of 18. We uh, were never adopted, unfortunately, but due to circumstances, I would say it was fortunate because we had good families. That's true as well. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so with that, I journeyed through foster care and where we learn a lot of nuggets in this life and um, how we want, and the women who raised us and the men who raised us along the way in our foster homes, they taught us so much in life. And so we took what they taught us and along with our life experiences, um, some for the good and some for the negative, but we took them all and learned from them. Um, some of them were blessings and some of them were Younger is lessons. So um, we entered, like I said, we entered foster care at six. We would go to our first foster. We went to a group home for a little while, went to our first foster home um, with the McMahons in Oberlin, Louisiana, and um, Daddy Abbott and Anna McMahon. And we would stay there until we were the age of 10. And then we came to Homa. And when we came to Homa, we lived in another group home, um, the McDonald home, and it'd be the first time that we would be separated. And so we will be separated from 10 to 11. And then we will be reunited um, at the age of 11 with our um, foster mom that, my, that Cherry will go to her name. Or we'll call her mom. we call her mom. Her name is Louise Navy Wallace. And so Cherry will be with her. And then I will come at 11. And then we will ex foster care from her. But with that, um, when we graduated high school, we were gifted uh, laptops. So we were, um, we exited the time volunteer of America, were gifting every high school student who was in foster care a laptop. And you had to go to New Orleans for the weekend. And while we was in New Orleans for the weekend, they taught us how to use all your office products, your Word, your PowerPoint at the time, Excel. I do believe one of the systems was data. Well, while we were in New Orleans and we all was getting desktops and everybody was really excited, one about the weekend in New Orleans, right? Um, and then two about being in a hotel, we felt a little grownish <laughs> at 18. At 18, you know, and I think we were most fascinated with the hotel with the pool. Yes, we love you know, you still love a hotel with a pool, but um, so with that, so we did that, and then we did um, Microsoft, we learned all those things. But while we were speaking with them, they realized Cherry and I were the only children who were going to college, and so um, who were present, and so our desktops became laptops. Fast forward, we're now in 2020, we're in the middle of a pandemic that most of us are COVID, most of us are unfamiliar with, and it's new to us, and they had a doctor senior. Well, when you had a doctor senior, people was putting their children up 
to, for persons to adopt them because they were missing their high school graduation, an important milestone. And one thing we realized um, was that foster children were not going to receive the benefits of someone putting them on social media to adopt them due to confidentiality reasons, you know. Um, they can't be posted on social media and things like that. So what we did, we reached out to, we, um, when we came to Tacoma, we were in um, the regional office. So we reached out back to that same regional office um, in DCFS in region three. And we asked them how many children they have in the region who were graduating. So out of seven parishes, uh, seven surrounding parishes, there were um, four who were um uh, excuse me, there were five foster children who were graduating. Well, with those five foster children who were graduating, what we decided was we will do, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. What we decided was we said, okay, let's take that, take those five children and gift them something that we were gifted, which was a laptop. Because we knew how important and how essential it was to get that laptop. Because that laptop took us from high school, from my first day of college to our very last day of college when we graduated from our alumni of Nichols. And young professionals, and young professionals, we used those laptops, it was our resource. And it was in the, you know, it's, we were about to tell our age, but it was in the early thousands. Laptops was not readily available back then. So you just have to picture the moment in which you lived in. So we, in the middle of an economic darn time when people were very, um, uh, mindful funds. My, yes, we were able to um, get um, buy-in from our local community. And so we had local um, public figures, um, some elected officials, and was able to actually buy the um, that purchase the laptops from a small business so that we could contribute to a small business. And it's still from in 2019, we started, uh, we created our brand, Everybody's Favorite Twins, which is a um, social media brand that we had in which we went around, um, we always Growing up in foster care, we understand the role that government and politics play into the everyday person's life because it played a huge part in our life, how much money our foster parents were given for stipends, how much we received in stipends and housing. And if we were I mean, able, how much money we got for clothes, clothes and it just every little thing. And so for us, we benefited from um, governments um, under um, Edward Edwards, Kathleen Blanco, and Mike Foster that understood, regardless of their political affiliations, they understood the importance of taking care of children who could not be taken care of. And we saw that that deteriorated under um, Jindal's administration. And it was able to rebound under Governor Edwards. And so we, knowing that we it allowed us to have an insight into politics, so we always had a political side an understanding of politics and government, the role our undergrads are in government and criminal justice. And so um, we always would ask people and try to teach people about um, government. And so we started to educate people about voting and why it's important, particularly in lower, middle, and socioeconomic levels. They don't truly understand. They're so busy surviving. They don't understand the importance of also being politically aware and voting. And so from there, we kind of got notoriety from that. And so we was able to use that notoriety to help us benefit a population, which we know firsthand how difficult it is to survive. And so from that endeavor, we did it for a couple of years. And then this year, we was actually able to uh, become an official nonprofit. The previous times we partnered with other nonprofits. And so we was able to launch our nonprofit Cherish Times 2, which will now the laptop I mean, initiative will fall underneath that. And we do different, different initiatives such as Thanksgiving meals for foster children, always advocating for a population which we know um, needs that advocacy. And, and then in 2024, we are hoping to launch um, Twin Fest Louisiana to help um, undergirth our, um, Lap not our laptop process. So it will be Louisiana's first and only festival celebrating twins and multiples. And so it is a and fun people who love them and it will be a fundraising effort for our um, nonprofit, um, Cherish Times 2, which is what allows us in the last four years, we have gifted 56 laptops to graduating foster children and those who um, received their high school diploma, their high set. So that was our whole um, premise is to actually be what we needed in life. And that is to be have advocates, find your voice, and have someone to give back on to you. 
Beautiful, just beautiful. Uh, you, you have touched on so many incredibly important things. I almost don't know where to start, but I think we'll start with um, the 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 reason that as soon as I heard about what with what you were doing, I just had to have you. I had to invite you to be on my show, and thank you for accepting, and thank you for being here. But one of the well, and it is, and thank you for that extensive background. <laughs> so we try to condense everything into one when you have such a extensive journey. So make sure we clear and concise. So thank you. Oh, so no problem. So the a, a big challenge to many young people, not all of them, but to a lot of young people, is they get to college, and even some of those with full support and and full resources, even they fail. Uh, smart young people, but it, it is especially hard for people who's known in their family has ever gone to college before. They don't know to, what to expect. They're in an entirely different environment. And a lot of these young people, due to no fault of their own, fail and because they don't have the resources they need. They don't have the support that they need. Uh, and, and, and these are young people that want to go to college and want to succeed. So the and what's so so it makes me so angry is uh, you know this is there's a rampant thing it's a it's a racket basically throughout this country, um, nearly every college takes part in it. They accept young people knowing full well there's a very high probability that they will fail that they will need to drop out. And so what happens is these young people um, feel bad about themselves because they they didn't succeed and they're saddled with debt and the and universities know this and they 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 see universities colleges uh trade schools they do not little to nothing about it so your program battles that that racket your program is we're going to make sure that these young people make it and 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 one of the key things is the technology uh what is what is it you say technology is here or what is it that you say? Technology is now. Yeah, it, it's not coming. Now. It's now. It's now. Yeah, so, so and thank you for for your hard work. Now, you 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 yeah. you commented that you got a lot of assistance and buy in from the community uh, for paying for these laptops. Can you talk about that a little bit more, and how you got that? To, how you got that happening? Um, we mouse. What? Um, we. We have mouth, big mouth, big mouth. We have big mouth. <laughs> we are very much known for our um communication <laughs> skills, our community skills. Yes, we we are known for our community. We're gonna say big mouth. We're known for our our communication skills. skills. We're very communicative. So um, you, you and mm -hmm. go on. So one of the reasons why we was able to do so is that. Um, from building actually everybody's favorite oh, community service. We serve in our community um, on a regular basis. We regularly volunteer and serve our community. And so from that service, um, being twins and at our big age, you dress them alike, <laughs> um, we'll pay attention. And sometimes you don't realize the attention that people give you. Mm -hmm. And so we have been able, fortunately for us, is to get people who know very little about foster care, um, who don't really have a personal lived experience to buy into a cause that is um, important to us. And their buy-in is solely based uh, mostly on um, me and my sister and our relationship and knowing that it's something that we love. And so it's always heartwarming and um, it always tear, makes us tear up to know that people believe in a cause simply because it matters to you without having a firsthand account. As you know, many people don't pay attention to things or care until it impacts them. And so to have a group of people in our community buy into what we care about and they don't have any direct impact is essential to us. It's, it's essential. And if something is important, you can't do it alone. Okay, now in your case, there's two of you, but that some things are just too big for the two of you to do all by yourself. You need partnerships. Yeah, you need co 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 coalitions, and uh, you've obviously done a fabulous job building those. And thank you for explaining to our listeners, you know how how you can make that happen. You discuss branding, which is something that I've never touched on. Uh, in this is I think the ninety seventh episode, 
Uh, I understand what branding is. I know it's important, but it's never been discussed in this part in this podcast before. Branding is very important. So can you talk a little bit more to our listeners about about the the brand, why it's important and how you how you got branded? Okay, so we got branded because of me. I um, so we we are we are twins. Who, uh, we are we, people always see us together, and they always say, people when we were growing up, people always say I'm my favorite twins, right? So please know so, we are not that self involved so, when we named it ourselves. Well, everybody right? favorite twins. So everybody always say y'all my favorite. You're my favorite twin. You know, you know there are people who also have twins and things like that, and they know other twins. But people always say y'all my favorite twins. I have every time I see y'all, y'all smiling, y'all laughing. For the most part, um, we're very fashion forward. Uh, we still dress similar at, uh, and I like it at a lot of times. And even as we got older. And so what I did was when we was thinking about, okay, what will we name ourselves? We say, I said, Cherry, everybody always say we're their favorite. Most people who are who do the twin, uh, who will brand themselves twins, they always go by their last name. They either the Will, you know, Wilmore twins, the Williams twins, the you, uh -huh, whatever your last name is, right? The McCullough twins. Well, what we have, the, what we did was we didn't want to be just like everyone else when you add in, when you create another brand of twins. We want to stand out and we want to stand out because we are not, we even though we're twins, we are, we stand out on our own, we're standouts. And you have to realize in our, in our neighborhood, which is like three streets, there's eight sets of twins. Yes. <laughs> so how are we going to stand out from the, just in our subdivision, there was eight sets of twins and a set of triplets. And a set of triplets. So how are we going to set ourselves apart? Yeah. And so it was always amazing to have people knowing that there was such a close connection and you have to realize our mom and her twin brother and then her other, um, the other set of twins, our uncle and our uncle were two of the sets of twins. Um, and so how do we stand out and, and so we took what people called us. They always said, I love y'all. I love y'all. So we took that and I said, you know, everybody always says that we're their favorite twins. And we went back and forth between everybody and everyone. Like that was the one. <laughs> but then someone, then I said, well, we know we everybody's favorite twins. And when I said it, it just stuck in it. And it, and it clicked. And that's when we stay with it. And Brandon is also ensuring that, you know, when people see us, you know, they look for us to want to be together and they look for us to be dressed alike. So it's always funny when we don't dress alike and people see us, they are so disappointing. <laughs> right. And so we have all, we have branded ourselves to the point where people expect us to dress alike and they always expect us to, to be, be together. And they also expect us to have something fashionable on, right? And to be serving. Yeah. Um, I said the thing that transcends between our everybody favorite twins brand um our, our, our nonprofit is four things creativity mm -hmm. collaboration cultivation and community and community and the reason for and connection and connection and the reason for that is because we are very creative people we, we love creativity we understand how imagination and innovation play such a critical role in your life you want to change it you have to be able to dream and allow somebody to allow to make you believe I believe in you enough to know that your dreams and your innovations can actually become reality. Um, connection, we love people. Um, and we I can never meet no strings. We have never. We we will talk to you. She, she I, I'm gonna stop talking at, at a certain point. She's gonna keep it going. She'll be the last conversation. And um cultivation, education, both sets of our foster parents are making mess. And I'm and the way we we distinguish them is mama and daddy Albert and mom. And they were big on education. Mm -hmm. They were born in the 30s, the early 40s. They were actually our grandparents' age. They had um, lived through segregation and integrate and integration of children in integrated schools. The thing that they knew that was going to change the trajectory of your life was education. So we believe in cultivating people and knowing that exposure changes your life. Mm -hmm. And collaboration. By us being twins and just in life, we know firsthand that you don't do anything truly alone. We nobody really top, um strap on their own boots, true strings, and they make it in life. You, we are interdependent on each other. Yes. And we will go so much further in life if we understand that and we don't shy away from it. For whatever reason of late, it's like shaming a person to need help and to collaborate. But it is so essential. Um People always tell us we're good by ourselves. We always tell people we're good by ourselves, but we're a force when we're together. 
<laughs> I love it. And and that touched on what we already discussed, you know, the value of partnering, the uh, partnering coalition, uh, critical, because nothing truly important gets done by yourself or just two people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I, with, with the branding, uh, if we could just close on that subject before we move on to the next, how soon when you'd begun to be a force and and you were working together and you're working on your project, how soon um, uh, it, it, in the past, in the, in the years since you began this, did you have the everybody's favorite twins? Uh, right from the very beginning, maybe six months into it, do you, do you recall? Um, I would say we we really locked everybody's favorite twins in. We actually locked it in before we branded yeah. ourselves when I realized that we branded ourselves. Okay. So it was very early on, but but I, I just wanted to tell our listeners that you don't don't worry about getting the brand from day one, because uh, oh, it, 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 it it'll and come. Not, mm -hmm. And not only that, but sometimes it's good to go back to your old your old stuff about yourself because that's when you catch it. Because we branded ourselves everybody's favorite twins be long before we, we realized we was branding ourselves. There you it, go. It took, other, it took other people to notice this. Mm -hmm. And we was like, what? They was like, twins, that is y'all brand. I was like, no, it's not. It's just something we say on Facebook being funny on social media. And they was like, no, that's a brand. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is a brand where you break it down. But Cherish came, like, Cherish came later. Uh, we had um, the 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 everybody favorite twins mm -hmm. social media brand, but the nonprofit and Cherish came. Uh, we was doing the work, but we wasn't established. And mm -hmm. so when we came to think about what is something that we mm -hmm. want, we would want our nonprofit to be. Um, and that took some time. Our nonprofit branding or Cherish, it took about two to three years because we were going to name it Laptop of Love, but then we didn't want to limit it. And I cannot remember who said we was me. My sister said to me, I couldn't remember which one. I gotta give the credit. So you know, people always had started like um doing like simple things, right? And sometimes you have to look at other people's brands, and that's okay. That's not copying. That's being smart. Um and 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 learning from others. And I realized that everybody had did something that dealt with taking care of others, but very shortly, right? A lot of people have cares on their um brand, and they have give on their um nonprofit work. And so I said, I was thinking to myself and I was writing down different words that kind of related to care. And I actually Googled like words that make care. So it's supposed to be um everybody's favorite twins cares, right? Mm -hmm. That was it. That was gonna be the brand. And then I was like, that's kind of long and everything. No one liked it. No kids, nobody liked it. Not the I love everybody's favorite twins, but when we added kids, all of a sudden everybody hated it. So I Googled the word what made would make care and I saw the word cherish and it was something about when I saw cherish it brought and I was writing it down on paper I like to write I love to write I was just writing down just writing it down and I'm just writing in different ways and our foster our mom okay her name is Louise when we were um very um witty Yes, you that were yes children, and so when you would call our names, we would the other one would purposely go. So if you said C H S H would go. If you say Cherry, Cherry would go. If you said Sherry, Cherry would go. Our names are very similar; they sound the same. If you're not paying attention, if you're not paying attention, and we would trick people. Um, witty, witty, witty with the tricks. And so our mom um is a twin. And her, her name is Louise and Lewis, right? Her and her twin. And so she learned very early on, I can't call them Sherry and Cherry. So she made a point, she knew it purposely tricking her. So she made a point to call us C-H and S-H. So, so we purposely that. should not no longer mm -hmm. trick her. Because right. if you say C-H, S-H, that's very distinct. You can't say that, oh, I thought she called me, right? No. And it was very distinct. And it's something that she's like, she's the only person who ever called us that. Absolutely. No one else ever called us that. It was after she passed. It's 2019. It's, she she has left us in this world and we feel alone. And, but we also want to honor her. And I see the word cherish. And what stands out to me is the C-H and the yes. S-H. That's just beautiful. It's perfect. It's per absolutely perfect. So I, I noticed 
I sat up and took note when you said you're working in 2024 on launching something new. Um, it was, and I, th that is, I, I'd love to hear about it. And, and I want to point out to our listeners, everybody always wants to know, okay, so you've done this, that, and the other. Well, what are you working on now? What's next? And so it's good if you're trying to beat the big guys, if you're working on a project, it's, it's always good to have something you're working on because you're always going to get that question and you want to have a fabulous answer. So uh, could you talk just a little bit more about what's next in 2024, please? Twin Fest Louisiana. So we are doing Twins Fest Louisiana. It's a celebration of twins, multiples, and the people who love them. And so we will be hosting it in Homa, Louisiana, downtown Homa. Uh, we are at this, we, we, you know, if you run a nonprofit, you, people do events in order to raise funds, in order to give to be a service. And so we know big, gifting children laptops is an expensive gifting. And so that takes funding and it takes sponsorships. And so we wanted to do a great event, something that's never been done before. Um, in, in this area. In this area. Um, something that was unique, something that sticks to the brand of who we are. And so we thought, I thought of, man, let's do a twin fest. <laughs> And I was like, no, because there's Twins Day Festival in Twinsburg, Ohio. And I said, no one's going in there. No one's going there. She said, no one's going there. And I was like, I, like it was jokingly, right? Yes. Not saying that people don't. Because they, I'm telling you, it is a great event if you ever have the opportunity to go. But I was like, most people would never go. But if you're in the South, if you're in Texas or you're in Mississippi or you're in Alabama or Arkansas or Tennessee, you'll come to Louisiana because people do it all the day. All the time, we go from New Orleans to the Saints to the Falcons game back and forth all year round. So I say, let's do something cool and fun, and let's do a twin festival and let's raise some funds to support the laptops and that we do every day. Support and our nonprofit, support our nonprofit cherish, and it will be a fun, unique way to do it. And so, right now, the date is April 6, 2024, it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and it's in downtown Homa. Mm -hmm. And we are super excited about a uh, very unique and the only festival of its of its kind in Louisiana. So yeah, so you know some twins, you know some multiples. Even if you're single, yeah, they have activities because it is for everyone. It's family focused. Uh, we would like to have an emphasis on twins and multiples, but um, people always love us. They swear they want to be a twin, or I wish I had twins, or they just like the idea of twins. So we're going to do for our um, single births, we have things for you as well. So we have Bring It Back to Sadie, we tell our age, where your, your couples used to come and dress alike. We're going to do a stole your face contest, because as you know, everybody, child, grandchild, stole their face, niece, nephew. And then we're going to do Find Your Dapper Ganger. So come out, have a good time. Um, we are actively seeking sponsors for it. So if you're interested, you can email us at um, twinfestlouisiana um, at gmail.com. Um, and it is going to be, I think it's going to be so fun. Um, in our minds, Twin Fest, um, it's a, it will have live music and some games, kids on. It'd be a fun thing to do, mm -hmm. um, particularly in our bio region that is still recovering from Hurricane Ida. Um, so not only do you support our nonprofit, but you also, it's a real economic boom for our body region that still needs to recover from the damage of Hurricane Ida, even though it's been two years going on three, everyone don't recover the same. And so there's still a lot of families that, and businesses that can use the economic boom and the assistance of others to come and enjoy. And not only do we show off the beauty of the body, okay, we pray down here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and not only do we show up the beauty of our environment, the beauty of our where we live at in the heart of Louisiana, but we also give back at the same time. So even when we want to do something that benefits our nonprofit, we always think of, think of others at the Absolutely. same time. And Collaboration thank you is the so key. Much. Thank you so yes. much for that. I, I am proud to have met you um just a few um about only about a week ago. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to get to know you better. And again, I'm so proud to know you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Hopefully we come back. And you can always follow us on all our social media pages. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. 
And we also have a website called www.eft, well, oh. eftwins.com. And again, we're everybody's apostrophe S, yes, favorite twins. <laughs> thank you again. Thank that you for having us. written that better. So, but thank you. And also thank all of you, the listeners for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to rate, subscribe, and like this podcast on all of your favorite platforms. And remember, no matter who you are, you too can beat the big guys. All right, now beat the big guys. Okay, so stay with me.